Hello and welcome. My name is Hannah Gumbo and I am an artist and illustrator. Today we're going to work together to learn how to draw a crawfish. Do you like crawfish? I know I like to eat crawfish. They're super yummy and I also like to draw them. Don't worry if you've never drawn one before. We're going to keep it to nice simple lines and I'm going to take you step by step so it'll be easy. This video is part of the Acadiana Center for the Arts online series called Virtual Art Studio. This is where teaching artists present lessons in visual art, dance, music, and more. That way you can enjoy these videos from anywhere. But before we get started, let me tell you a little bit about what kind of art I like to make. One of the things you'll realize about the kind of art that I like to make is it's always very colorful. So here I have a spoonbill bird, and I like to make art with all kinds of materials. So sometimes I use crayons, paints, pencils, and other times I use digital artwork, like drawing on an iPad. And that's how I drew this image that you're seeing right now. This is called a spoonbill bird, and it's naturally nice and pink because it eats the crawfish and the shrimp that we have here in Louisiana, kind of like a flamingo. And look at his nose. That's why he's called a spoonbill. You see how the tip of his nose is kind of like a spoon? Here we go again. I have lots of colorful artwork and I have things that are overlapping. That means some shapes are in the front and some shapes are in the back. I love to do that because it reminds me of another type of artwork that I really like, which is quilts. Have you ever seen those really cool sewn blankets? Maybe you have one in your house. When I was making this drawing, I was thinking about quilts. And I also like to use lots of patterns. You could see polka dots. What else can you find? Maybe you see some stripes in there. And I also have some wording. If you look at the very bottom, it's the words keep, and then go about to the middle of the page, on, and the top of the page, climbing. Keep on climbing. That means just keep going. Not only do I like to make drawings that hang on the wall and look beautiful, I like to put my artwork on things that can be used for all kinds of purposes. So here, I took my artwork and I turned it into a postcard. That means you could just flip it over, add a stamp, and send it to one of your friends. Pretty cool, huh? Next, we have a little bit of a cool alligator here, but what does it say in the middle? Instead of drawing in his whole body, I wrote the words, see ya later. Have you ever heard that before? Somebody says, see ya later, alligator. This is a sticker that you can put on your car, but you can also use it as a bookmark or hang it up and just enjoy it. And once again, you can see that instead of drawing an alligator green or a color that you might see him out in the wild, I chose hot pink. And I wanted to choose a really bright yellow background. Sometimes for me, colors are less about how they look in real life and more about just experimenting and having fun and seeing different combinations I could use. Here we have a little bit of a combination. You see it's that same spoon bill I told you about in the very beginning. You see it's nice pink um, feathers and wings coming out. So with this, I started with a drawing on my iPad and I decided, what words I wanted to use and what colors. And then if you look on the other side, this is actually painted in real life. Can you tell what that surface is? It almost looks like a wall, but it's actually the ground. This is over a storm drain where all the water goes into in the city. It helps it drain so that there's not water on the ground. And this is really cool because this message, it's beautiful artwork, but this message also reminds us to only let water drain down there. We don't want to let any trash or any nasty stuff get into the water supply. Here's a really fun project. I took my drawing and I actually printed it on fabric. That means I could turn it into any kind of clothes I want. I decided to make a bandana here and you could use a bandana to tie around your neck like you see here or wear in your hair or even tie it around your dog's neck. But what I love about it is that it's a drawing that you get to use in everyday life. 
And sometimes I like to make projects just for fun. This reminds me of a Valentine's um, heart-shaped candy box. It's really just a piece of um, cardboard that I added all these decorations to, but it is a fun little festive way to celebrate Valentine's Day and to show a beautiful little pet. And if you see this um, little dog's name is Clem, that's short for Clementine, and around her neck is a bandana, just like I talked about, where you can add a bandana. If you look closely, you'll see I didn't just use paint and markers and things like you saw in the other images, but this is using glitter paper, sequins, pom-poms, all kinds of fun things. So sometimes I like to draw with objects too. And the last image I'm gonna show you before we get started on drawing together is this mural. Do you know that word? A mural is a painting that gets painted directly onto a building. So murals can be outside or they could be inside. And what's fun about this for me is a lot of the other drawings that I showed you are pretty small. When I get to paint a mural, a lot of times I get to draw bigger than me, which means I might need a ladder or I might need a very long paintbrush to reach. But I take the same idea and take a small drawing and make it a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger till it fits the space. And you can see through all of these things that I make, what's important to me is having fun and always using lots of color. So what do you say? Are you ready to get started and draw a crawfish together? All right, before we actually start drawing, let's look at a crawfish. So I know you've probably seen them before, and this one isn't real. I didn't make it. It's a toy that I went ahead and just decorated. But let's go ahead and look at the size of a crawfish and get an idea of what we're about to do. So if I was going to draw, say, a person, their head would be all the way at the top of their body. But on a crawfish, here's the top, here's the bottom. The head is actually more towards the middle. And that's gonna be the first mark we start with is the head. So let's think about that. To make sure we have room on our paper, we are gonna find the middle of our paper first so that we can make sure the head is in the right spot. Up next, let's look at all the different shapes we have here. So if we look at the crawfish's head, it's almost like a triangle, right? And we've got two eyes. It's almost like you'd wanna draw the mouth here, but this is his nose. His mouth is on the other side, so we won't be drawing the mouth from this um, position. After the head, we have his body, then a very long tail, right? And it kind of overlaps these same shapes and then it fans out at the end. We can notice these arms right here, it almost looks like a spider or something, huh? These are some kind of crazy shapes. And then we have his long antennas, the ones right here come all the way even above the claws. We can decide how tall we wanna make these. And then of course, the claws, okay? And same thing, crawfish sometimes have smaller claws, sometimes they have really big ones. So we'll get to decide how we do that. So let's look, take a nice look at what we're gonna be doing and remember what I said. Even if you've never done this before, we're gonna go step by step and make it really easy, okay? So up next, let's talk about our materials. You'll need a pencil with an eraser. You'll definitely want some scissors nearby. And you'll need any kind of paper. I'm gonna use this white paper here, okay? And this is like a standard notebook size. It's eight and a half by 11, but you can use any kind you want. In fact, I'm just gonna take one sheet. And to get us started on learning how to do it, I'm gonna fold this in half and I'm folding this way, not the long skinny way, but just right over like here. I'm gonna make sure my edges line up. And this doesn't have to be perfect. This is just to get a nice skinny piece of paper. And do you see how the shape of my paper looks similar to the shape of my crawfish? So that'll get us started in a nice position. All right, we're gonna start our drawing. Now remember, I suggest that you use a pencil and definitely have an eraser. And anytime you're doing a drawing lesson, you don't wanna draw nice and hard. You wanna actually keep things nice and light. So if you wanna go back and erase and change your shape, it's easy to do that. But since I want you to be able to see what I'm drawing really well, I'm gonna use a dark marker. So if you wanna challenge yourself and you don't wanna erase and you wanna use a marker, you can do that too. 
Okay, so when I show you how to draw something, I'm gonna be using something that I like to call guide dots. What a guide dot is, is it tells my brain where my pencil or my marker in this case is about to go. So first I wanna look up and I wanna put a dot right in the middle of the paper towards the top and towards the bottom. I put one here and here. This is just to remind myself that I don't want to go off the paper because I actually want to be cutting this crawfish out, okay? So I don't want his claws to go over the edge of the paper or his tail to go over the edge. So this is going to remind me that this is where I want to start my drawing. Then I'm going to go between these two dots and I'm going to find right about the middle of my paper. So I'm going to say it's here. And I'm going to go a little bit above that. And this is where we're going to start our head because it wasn't quite in the middle, but it was towards the middle. Okay, and I'm gonna do a dot right there above my finger. Looks good. And remember the shape of that head was almost like a triangle. So I'm gonna do a dot slightly to the left and the right. You see how that kind of looks like a nice triangle? Okay, now I'm gonna connect these two dots, but I'm not gonna do a straight line. I'm gonna do a nice curve just like that. Perfect. And I'm going to connect these two the same way, curving outward. Good. And the other side. Perfect. Now let's add his eyes. Very good. All right, next we're going to start on the body. Just like I did the dots here, I'm going to do another dot. And I put it about as uh, long as my head is. Okay, I'm gonna come straight down and stop. Now, you see this nice curve shape that we did? We're gonna be doing this a lot of the time while we're drawing our crawfish, nice curve shapes. So, just to know where my curve shape is gonna stop, I'm gonna come straight down a little bit to the left and make a guide dot here. Same thing on the other side. And then I'm going to connect the dot to the center line with a nice curve. Good. Let's do the other side. Good. Okay. Now we're going to do some nice diagonal lines to connect back up to the neck. I'm going to use a straight line on either side. And now we start to see his body. Next, I'm going to go inside this bottom and do a small dash line going straight down. Perfect. Now here, I'm going to use that same curved line we did for the neck. And now I'm starting to see his body take shape. Okay. Next up, we're going to start on his claws, which we know are very big. So the first section of the claws, we are going to stop right around the size of the crawfish's top of his nose. So I'm going to go where his nose is, go left, and do a little guide dot. Same thing on the other side. Good. Now instead of going straight across, I'm going to do a diagonal line going down towards my paper, starting where my dot is. Watch how I do it. Good. Now we're gonna be doing a lot of things on the left that we do on the right. It does not have to look perfectly the same from one side to the next. We're practicing, right? So if one claw is a little bit bigger or smaller than the other, that's okay. Sometimes that's how crawfish look in real life too. Okay, so I'm looking at these. Maybe I decide I want his claws to be a little bit bigger. I might go back. All right, now I'm gonna connect them to the neck. So I want to go from this dot right here all the way to the neck, but I'm not doing a straight line. Remember what we've done, some curves. So I'm going to curve in, stop. Let's try to do the same thing on the other side. Curve in, stop. Good. All right, let's finish these off. I'm going to go from here down towards his body. Stop. Stop. Good. All right, I'm gonna go inside this claw right here and just do a straight line up, over, 
and back down. It almost looks like a little sleeve. You could see it as a small rectangle coming out right there. Let's do the other side. Perfect. Okay. So a crawfish is nothing without his claws, right? So let's get started on the best part. So this is where I want to end my drawing, but I don't want his claws to go all the way to the center. So I'm going to do a dot right here to the left of my center dot and right here to the right. And this is going to be a big swooping line, probably the biggest you'll do. So watch me first. I'm going to start right before this dot and I'm going to start going straight to the left, but then I'm going to make a big curve back down to the sleeve shape. Okay. So watch how I do it. Woo. Boom. That looks really good. Now the le next lines I'm going to make are going to resemble a capital letter G. So this is part of the G and then I'm going to find the center and I'm going to go straight to the right. Good. And then I'm going to connect these in the same kind of arch. Watch how I do it. Good. Do you see how that looks like a capital letter G? Perfect. Now to close off my claw, it's a nice pointy shape. So I want to make sure that I'm almost creating like a triangle when I come down. So I'm going to start here and slowly curve it to where I attach right down here. He's got some really big claws. Better watch out for him. Okay, so everything I did here, we're going to do on the other side. Starting before my dot, big swooping line, stop. Now this one looked like a letter G. This will look like a backwards G. Find the middle of your shape, go left, stop. We're going to connect these two, but remember, we're going to do a nice curved shape. Go. Perfect. And then let's connect these and make sure that this claw is nice and pointy. Awesome. Now he needs the inside of his claw. I want it to almost touch the top claw, but not quite. So I'm going to put my guide dots in here. And then I'm going to actually do a straight line going from here all the way connecting it down. Boom. Next up, I'm going to make a skinny triangle and close it back up here. But instead of doing a straight line or a curved line, I want to do a zigzag. Zig, zag, boom. Okay, let's do the other one. Remember, I find my guide dot straight down. Then I'm connecting it almost a triangle from here to here, but I'm going to do my zigzag. Watch me. Zig, zag, boom. Cool. All right, now remember he has these big antennas. You can decide how long they are. Um, they can go past his claws, but I think for me, I kind of like where my top dot is, and I'm going to put one beside it. And I think I want my antennas to end there. Now they're going to come from right above his eyes, right here on the tip of his nose. And I want to make sure I have room for two. So I don't want to draw the first one in the middle because I won't have room for the other one. So first I'll do the left hand side. And much like this claw, I'm going to do kind of a zigzag squiggle shape. Okay? You can make your straight or you can make a zigzag like mine. Starting from the nose and stopping right here. Good. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Stop. Looking good. Okay, so this is a great crawfish, but what's missing? The bottom half of his body, right? Okay, so let's work on that. We want to remember that we still need to leave room for the tail. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and make some marks so I know where I want to stop. The bottom of his tail is like a nice fan. So I'm going to put a dot right about here. This gives me a good amount of space for the fan. Now, if you're using a pencil and you make a mark and you don't like where it is, remember, you can always erase it and make the mark again. Okay. Now you see this nice curved shape. A crawfish is going to get a little bit smaller as he comes down to the end of his tail. So I'm going to make that same shape, but just a little bit smaller here. Perfect. 
okay? And then I wanna make two dots inside of the crawfish so that I know where I'm gonna do the different parts of his tail. So I'm gonna put one here, and then I wanna put one here so there's equal distance. And remember, if you don't like where your dots are, go ahead and erase it and change it around, but I just like that there's, I can fit my finger here, here, and here. That looks good to me. Okay, when you have your two dots where you want them, you're gonna make the same shape here and here. Perfect. Okay, now we're gonna connect his tail. I'm gonna do nice curved lines to connect this into one shape. I'm gonna start on the left and then go to the right. Watch how I do it. Boom, boom, okay. Now as I go down, I wanna start it even a little bit smaller, a little bit closer in than I did the last one. Boom, boom. Let's do the last one. Remember, going a little bit smaller each time. Boom, boom. And now we have that last one. And look, I don't wanna go further than this. I'm gonna make a big shape, perfect. And then I'm gonna have two shapes poking out, one on the left and one on the right. Watch how I do it. Swoop. Ready to do the next one? Swoop. All right, this is starting to look like a crawfish. We're just missing one thing. Remember his four legs to the left and to the right? Let's go ahead and add those in. So we're gonna do these quickly and I'm just gonna make them straight lines like I did the antennas. So I'm gonna do four lines going out from his body. One, two, three, four. And then I'm gonna do four diagonal lines connecting back up. One, two, three, four. Let's do it on the other side. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Perfect. Now you can leave your crawfish as is or something that I like to do is add some texture lines. So texture lines just show that the bumpy parts of the crawfish, some of the ridges that you see. So you can leave it as is, or you can do what I do. I just do some nice curved lines, maybe some polka dots. When it comes to his torso or his belly up here, I like to do almost like upside down U's. Let's add some of them on his claws too. That shows all the bumps the crawfish has. You can even do some little lines on the side right here. Just have fun with it. What do you wanna add? I kinda like all the texture lines. It kinda comes to life for me. Okay? Looking good. All right, so you can leave your crawfish just like this, or if you want, you can go ahead and cut him out, and I'll show you what we can do once you cut him out. All right, so you can see here what a cut out crawfish would look like. And I showed you, um, remember I drew with a Sharpie, but if you would have drawn with a pencil, it should look something like this. And I wanted to show you what it would look like if I colored it in. Of course, you always wanna add your name, right? But I just did a nice cut all the way around. I didn't make it perfect on the lines because there's so many interesting shapes. It might make it kind of hard to cut out. I just did a big shape all the way around it. Um, and then I went back with a black line so I could see the pencil lines that I did. And then I highlighted with a red and I colored him in pink. Have you ever seen a pink crawfish? I don't think that they exist, but did you know that there are actually such a thing as blue crawfish and white crawfish? It's true, they exist in the wild, but when it comes to drawing your crawfish and coloring it in, you can actually choose whatever crayon colors you want. That means if you wanna make a polka dot crawfish, can you? Yes! What if you wanna make a striped or, I don't know, part of it's blue, part of it's orange? Could you do that? Yes, this is your crawfish, so play around and have fun. You can see that I did a background color here, but for this one, I just kept it white. So you decide how you wanna color it in and how you wanna cut it, and go ahead and do that. I wanna show you something else too. These are all the different steps that we just did together. 
one, two, three, four, all the way to eight. And this paper can actually be accessed, downloaded, printed in the description down below in the YouTube video. So if you wanna print this out, you can show your friends or you can practice drawing crawfish again, okay? So let's look at them one more time. And then up next, I'm gonna show you after you color and cut your crawfish, a few things that you can do with it besides just hang it as awesome art. Okay, awesome. So if you followed along, you should end up with something like this. And remember, this is just the start. So now that you've drawn this crawfish, you could try drawing him on a full sheet of paper, really big. You can draw him uh, a little bit smaller. You can color him in. I'll show you some examples right here. This one's using color pencil. This one's using some nice paint pens. You can use whatever you have. Um, here's some of the supplies that I used. And my personal favorite, some really cool paint pens. This just helps me to get all kinds of different colors. And that way I could practice drawing crawfish a few different times and try something new each time. So remember I told you that there are some ways we can transform our drawing. So do you have any boxes like this around your house? Maybe in the recycling bin? If you notice, once you're finished with them, if you open them up, you have a nice sturdy drawing surface. This is gonna be a great option if you'd like to make a bookmark. You can also make a bookmark on thin paper, but this allows it to be nice and sturdy and not have any wrinkles in it. So you would just follow the same steps of creating your crawfish like we did before, but you would do it on this nice paper. And that's what I did here. And it's so nice and sturdy that I find it works great for using as a bookmark to hold my place. You see that? Now my crawfish is just poking out the top. Another thing that I love to do is to not only draw a crawfish, but to draw his little house, his little mud house. And you'll notice I use the same type of paper, the back of a box, because the back of a box is this nice brown color. So without even coloring it in, it looks just like a crawfish house. And I just used some rounded edges. You may wanna get a parent or an older sibling to help you make this cut right here. But then using the same steps we did before, I can make my crawfish live in his little home like this. And if you notice, you could pull up and I wrote a message, hello. And then I wrote a little birthday message on the back. So this would be a great idea if you wanted to make a greeting card for somebody. Um, but no matter what you do with your crawfish, experiment, have fun and try new things. All right, well our time together is almost finished. I hope that you had an awesome time. I hope that you learned a little bit and I hope the next time you think about crawfish, you don't just think about eating it, but maybe about drawing it too, okay? So have fun drawing and thanks for creating with me today. Um, be sure to come back next week because there's gonna be another new virtual art studio and you don't wanna miss it. Bye.